Who's there? It's me, Timmy. Timmy? Now, wait a minute. Shouldn't you be at home? You really shouldn't be outside. It's dangerous out there. I think I broke it. Well, we'll just have to do something about that, won't we? On this episode of Your Geek Fix. If you're thinking to yourself, what did I just watch? <laughs> Why did I get recommended this video? What am I doing here? What is the meaning of life? Well, you should probably watch our first Pip-Boy video, which will explain at least a few of those uh, questions. But that Pip-Boy and the video that we posted was about six months ago. And it wasn't until this month that it went viral uh, from 300 views to over 300,000 views. We also went from a few hundred subscribers to over 10,000 subscribers. And for those 10,000 subscribers, here's a special thanks. We've also had a few comments, and uh, I've tried to answer every one of those comments because I feel like if somebody's put in the time to watch our videos and then also to comment that we should recognize them. However, there was a lot of repeat questions that also made me realize that there's some details that we never addressed. A lot has happened to the Pip-Boy in the last six months, and there's been a lot of lessons learned. There are also a lot of real truths that YouTube videos like this tend to hide and I thought it was time that we came clean about all the facts. But first, let's look at the reason why we even did this project to begin with. Now, I first saw this kit last year on Tested. It had this cool retro punk look, uh, which is what I'd refer to as anything that, that looks futuristic, uh, yet uh, like something out of the 1950s. Uh, something about that just I love. Have this awesome display case and art. They even have the quote, you can't get closer to the Pip-Boy geometry than this. You know that you're a geek when you become obsessed with a toy or prop to the point that you find yourself re-watching unboxing videos and getting stimulated by reading reviews. Just watching the opening of the box is, is an experience. Unlike the Pip-Boy 3000 Special Edition or the Bluetooth Edition, the 2000 is not made by Bethesda. It's the one company that licenses this Pip-Boy and some other Fallout props. Their catchphrase is, owning is believing. And they're all about immersion, bringing the fantasy world into the real world by making packaging and directions that are from the real Fallout universe. They also make Star Trek props and wands and some other Fallout props that actually work, do something, light up. So it was surprising when they released this model and it didn't do any of that. Another thing about being a geek is that you can't help but think about ways that you might modify or, or display something. In that process, I came across another tested video with Norman Chan interviewing Chris Bernardo of The Wand Company. Before I could break into my kit, they announced upgrade kits that uh, would actually work. An FM radio with flickering candle lights and also that receives real world signals and sounds. Low. A working dosimeter uh, or Geiger counter, or at least a rad meter. Uh, <laughs> A lot of people commented on the fact that I used the word rad meter in the last video and, and there's a reason for that. And the reason is because that's what they actually are producing. It's, it's a radiation meter. A Geiger counter measures radiation as it's ionized in a Geiger-Muller tube. For this to effectively work, the tube has to have a certain gas volume for the scale meter to be accurate. So we can measure alpha, beta, even gamma rays. So we can't say that it's a Geiger counter because it doesn't use that actual technology. And it is a radiation meter and it does measure electromagnetic radiation using sensors that, as I showed in the last video, you can find in most phones. And making a real Geiger counter is difficult, but that doesn't mean there aren't people that aren't trying to do that. The biggest problem has been finding a tube that doesn't exceed that two inch space so keep an eye on people like uh, Joshua Driggs or the Zap Wizard 
who is making this awesome dosimeter for his Pip-Boy 3000 Mark IV. Very cool. However, I think that this is also the most expensive and difficult to produce upgrade and that's why they didn't release it with the other upgrades. I have a theory that the one company may not release the Rad Mater if uh, not enough people purchase the other upgrade. Seems like expense is pretty important to them and they're watching the numbers. I wrote them to ask uh, when it might be released and their response was, we don't have any solid plans or release dates just yet for the sensor add-on. We're hoping for release sometime next year. This was last year that I wrote them. Sorry, I can't give you much more information at this time. We're super excited for it. In the meantime, I'm using an app that's called Geiger Counter Pro. As far as the screen upgrade, I had hoped that it would be an actual device, something that was working, that you would be able to do things with, a lot like the Bethesda uh, versions of the 3000. But instead it's just a backlit screen. However, it, do, it does flicker and pop when you hit it, just like in the game, but it's still not like the real thing. And it seemed like when I tried to look up ways to upgrade my screen, it was just ways to backlight the picture. And I wasn't interested in that. I wanted something more. Something that, that could make it actually work, right? And then in the interview with Chris Bernardo and Norman Chan, they said it didn't look like there was enough space behind there to fit a, a working device. Chris said that they had intended to make a working device, but it was difficult to get a square screen that would fit it. And for it to be good, the device would need to interact and connect with the Fallout game. And that's what set the criteria for my challenge. Finding a square screen that, that fits the Pip-Boy and a working device that can interact with the Fallout game. In my mind, I wanted something that would also play music and videos and, and, and other games. But the big problem, like they said, is space. I can't deny the space is the limitation on, on making this thing work. When I first got it, I thought that I would have more room behind the screen because it's not just the space behind the screen, but there's also some little areas that seem to go off behind it. Uh, so I thought, oh, that's, that's a perfect place to extend into. But there's a bar that runs through those areas on the top and on the bottom. The flat area behind the screen is really only about a quarter of an inch to pushing it a half inch and the area inside is about 4 by 4.5 inches by uh, 4 by 3 inch screen. So that's the max that I could go. Then I thought, well, maybe I could also put some things up here in this area. But this is also pretty tight, even uh, for the smallest boards. There are touch screens which are the size and, and squareness, maybe, of the Pip-Boy, uh, which are out there. But at the same time, they also require some additional programming. Often they'll have these large sections that stick out, too, for connecting, and uh, I don't have enough room for that. My first thought was to use Arduino or Raspberry Pi technology. This is a Raspberry Pi, and as you can see, it's, it's a little bit too big. We have these big USBs here. We also have all these headers and these pins. The pins would also be pretty important for us to be able to control and power a screen. If I did it by way of HDMI and USB, well, then I'd have to have other boards that are in there, and, and once when you're done, uh, also adding power, there's not there's no more room. I think that when it comes to space, if you're wanting to do a lot of things or put a lot of things in, the Pip-Boy 3000 is the model to go with. This is actually a, a costume prop from Spirit Halloween. Uh, very, very cheap, uh, but at the same time, it has the right form factor and it, it has uh, moving buttons and You'll also notice that when we took the screen off, there's a lot of space in there. I mean, you can fit all kinds of things inside. So if you want a quick and easy way to be able to make a working Pip-Boy using Raspberry Pi technology or, or Arduino technology or, or whatever, it will most likely fit inside that Pip-Boy 3000. In fact, Bethesda released a Pip-Boy 3000 that came with some special editions of the Fallout 4 game. 
And it was neat because it also came with an app that you would install on your phone and then you could stick your phone inside of that Pip-Boy 3000 and it worked great. Two problems are that uh, one, they stopped making that special edition Pip-Boy and when they stopped doing that, they took the app off the Play Store. So these days if you want to get a hold of it, you'll have to find it somewhere on the internet and I'm going to include the name of the actual app at the bottom so that if you want to do that you can. The problem with using that in this Pip-Boy 2000 is that it would still be the wrong size for sticking a phone in. Uh, in the Pip-Boy 3000, the phone would stick in and then the app would play on only one portion of the screen and the rest of the phone would be hidden. Uh, the module for the screen is only about this wide. And at the same time, it's also a pretty large screen. When you put it up to most phones, they, they aren't wide enough. So all I did was I looked for what is the biggest square phone out there because I was thinking either a square phone or a really small tablet. Could I find a phone or tablet that would be the right size? Well, this is the BlackBerry Passport. Big piece was that I also needed to be able to run Android in order to use that app that they had already released. And when I tested it out, the BlackBerry ran it perfectly. And while the screen is square, the issue was still that there's this, this keyboard at the end and uh, I knew that that wouldn't fit. And so uh, before I bought it, I decided to get a hold of a picture of the motherboard and I printed it out just to make sure that it would fit. And, and it does pretty well except for this little bottom area right here. Uh, it's this USB that I was running into issues with, but I knew there was probably some workaround and maybe I could still hide it behind this other module. At that time, I was really thinking that I would rotate it to the side this direction and hide it back here behind the uh, lamps. I knew I had to rotate it, but I also assumed that the app would just rotate with it. And if it didn't, I thought, well, I can force rotate it. So I tried downloading some apps for force rotation, but of course those are either Android apps or they're Blackberry apps and they don't control that game. And the more and more that I looked into it, the more I found out that, that game is forcing itself to be a certain orientation based on the layout of the screen. So because it sees that this orientation is correct, for the display, it wouldn't let me turn it this direction. And uh, so it wasn't a lack of effort, but I just couldn't get it to work that way. But I'm sure that there's somebody out there that could. One of the benefits that would uh, exist if I was able to keep the screen in this orientation is that it's right here that you have your swipeable ability to get out of an app. Right now I have to use this button that I installed at the top to be able to get out of the apps and uh, that's not the best option. So if there were a way to do it, I'd do it that way. But what's cool about this screen is at the same time you can run any game on it and it will be running uh, in that format. Uh, Hitman was one of the games that I installed on here and it's cool to see it in that that square shape it works perfectly another thing i would recommend as far as this screen goes is i also went into the settings and made it so that i could pinch and zoom the apps so i could make them expand exactly to where i wanted them and so if i'm showing a video for example and the aspect ratio wasn't correct to fill up the whole screen i could pull it to uh, make it fill it up Remember that part of my determination on this project was that I really wanted to prove that even though they said it wasn't possible, that it was possible to make this work to some, to some extent and uh, that there was a screen that would work with it. So another thing to notice is that when I first started the project, I took the entire BlackBerry apart. I think I was trying to minimize it so much that I would have plenty of space. Again, uh, when you take it apart, it's only it's only about this big and this thick. And uh, that was fine, but in the end, what I figured out was much easier, made it run much better, plus kind of protected it better, was that I left the phone 
completely together. So all I was doing was taking off the backing and the keyboard and then I put on a new screen on this side. So the old screen was on the back to protect it and the new screen was on the front. And I do recommend getting one of the newer screens that doesn't have all of that uh, plastic on the back, one that's open so that you have a longer ribbon cable. You can buy ribbon cable extensions and I tried to do that, but this BlackBerry Passport extension cable is so specific, with a specific number of pins, I couldn't find one that would fit it. Of course, during the process of putting this thing together, I did figure out that I had room over here in the cuff to be able to keep the USB portion and suddenly my, my problem was solved as far as where to put that. So as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of things that we left out of that initial video. Uh, something to keep in mind is that even though it looks like the whole thing takes place in about 30 minutes, that's actually three months of filming and working on this Pip-Boy. Uh, each time that I failed, I would turn off the lights and go buy another part. And then I had to wait a couple of weeks and the part would arrive and then I'd break that and then I'd go to bed wondering if I should continue and, and then, uh, yeah, I'd keep going. The thing about making mistakes uh, and, and failures is that I think that they're an important part to the process. I think that they're needed in order to be able to make something good. And so each time that this didn't work out, that was something that I always took into consideration. At the same time, we're talking about cost. It's not cheap, right? So I would then have to decide, is it worth it? I mean, do I really want to do this? And by the time I was going to bed, I was thinking to myself, but I saw it work. It was working. I mean, I got it to work. Had it not worked even the first time, I, I might have just given up on it and said this isn't worth it. But uh, nope, nope, I, I knew it was possible. And so I started again. And then when that didn't work, uh, I was only more motivated to keep going. And eventually, it did work out. One of the questions that I commonly get is, how many phones did I go through to try and make this work? Uh, the answer to that is, I thought, I thought three. But apparently I ruined three phones. I don't even remember how I ruined the third one. Uh, I know that one of them, uh, the board got pushed and stretched and it ended up disabling a portion that was pretty important for being able to charge it. Another one, what happened was that uh, I had disconnected the screen by accident. The, the ribbon came pulled off and it was already on at the time. And uh, I quickly and impulsively pushed it back in and it fried it. The third one, I have no idea what happened. It just <laughs> doesn't work. I know that. Uh, so, so three wasted phones to get one working product. Um, why? Of course, that leads to the two most common questions that I will get is number one, can I buy one? Uh, will you make one for me? The answer is no. It's, it's actually illegal to modify a phone and to sell it, and so can't do it. Uh, even if I could, honestly, if I, was to, if I was to try and mail this, look at the way it looks. I, I thought about taking it to conferences and things too in the past, and the problem is I don't know if I could get it th through the airport. It looks like something that's, you know, dangerous. So for that reason, no. Although I hope that the wand company's been watching this because obviously people are willing to, to put out a lot to have something that, that works. So if they were to create something like that, I mean, just imagine, they do fine. The second question I get is how much did it cost? How much does it cost to make one? So the kit typically runs for $77 to $120, depending how you get it. Uh, GameStop actually had it for $50 or $60 last year. The radio kit from the wand company was about $50 to $70. Silo Prop Critter speaker is typically about $10 to $12, although I just bought one for four. And the BlackBerry phone 
is about 88 to 120 dollars depending on how you get it i would recommend used i've had a lot of people write me and say yeah but for a new one it's this much money don't buy a new one don't don't <laughs> please don't take apart a new blackberry phone i not a good idea it's just it's not a good idea i i would never buy a brand new phone for 270 or 300 dollars to take it apart uh i do not recommend that i don't recommend actually even doing this project totally against it hi kids darn it the rip air sock here get it darn sock repair no uh, sorry i'm not the writer on this thing i'm just here to remind you it can be really dangerous to modify devices like speakers and phones i mean really dangerous take it from me there used to be two of us they were like look at me i'm gonna take apart my phone nah, the next thing you know there was string and the smell of burnt cotton everywhere. I see it every time I close my eyes. <laughs> totally against it. Um, if <laughs> I just did this to show people it was possible and then also uh, to bring into question this the expense. Another couple things I never mentioned in the first video is that uh, the BlackBerry in the back, uh, if you can keep the cover connected, actually has the ability to charge wirelessly. Um, and so originally I thought, well, that'd be pretty neat, but keep in mind that the back of the BlackBerry is actually where the screen is. So I don't know how I would make that work, but there is that option. Something else that was in the original video that we took out had to do with this radio. The one that came with the Pip-Boy. Uh, uh, we put it together and had that on film and cut the whole thing out, but it is so cool. The, the, the way that it even works, so for this dial to go up and down in the opposite direction of the knob involves this idea of using a rubber band on the inside uh, which winds around that knob and uh, and then allows it to be able to do that is just so neat. And that was, I think, so cool. I felt horrible having to take this out after I had put it together. And, and then taking it out of the video, I also was disappointed about. The downside to that radio was the button, the switch on the side. Um, also, no mechanics with that. It's uh, purely based on its form, but because of that, it's hard to push. And so, I like the fact that on the new radio, you just lightly touch it and, and it does come on. But what I don't like about it, and I mentioned this in the last video, is that it's really hard to be able to change out the batteries because you can't even just slide off this side. Uh, basically, you unscrew this bolt. And then you'd think you would just be able to pull this off, but you can't because this speaker front is also screwed on and the, the grill that's underneath it, uh, because it's sunk into the actual radio as well as uh, some of the other pieces like this glass, it's all holding it in place. So you have to take off everything that's on the front at the moment and then pull it out. Um, I did think about filing down some of the things that are connected into it to make that easier. The other thing I thought about is there are these battery connectors that are used for, for models and for standing figures, uh, which, which fit into the three AAA, these are triple A's that fit in there and fit into that slot. And so then you can actually charge that area without having to pull everything apart or you can actually keep it plugged in like I want to back here so I could leave it turned on all the time. That would be brilliant. Um, and I did look at that. Uh, the, the part about uh, putting in batteries behind it is a possibility, 
just remember you've also got this cuff back here so I don't know and you don't want to ruin the bottom uh, so there are some different options a lot of people asked about connecting it to the battery inside of here um, and you could you could do that I don't know that I want to mess with uh, this battery anymore uh, this is from the Blackberry I don't know that I want to connect something else to the Blackberry and uh, honestly I haven't had the radio on enough except to look at the lights to to care too much but I do have cables which pull out from inside uh, for charging that, that speaker that's up in the top area. Another thing that I didn't talk too much about uh, when we talked about painting, because we did cover how, how we painted it, which I, it still looks great. The big question was, how am I gonna keep these letters over here, this, these words that are on the side? that say uh, stat, item, and data. I ended up masking mine off the first time around because I, I had other plans. I had plans to actually put on either a screen print on straight onto it or, or, or just cut some lettering. I even looked at transfers and, and nothing quite looked right. The thing I thought would look best was to have vinyl letters. These letters are pretty small. I, I, have, I called companies. I uh, had a friend of mine who had a uh, vinyl cutter try uh, to cut out the letters and all of them said, nope, not possible, not gonna happen. And so uh, you'd think that I would just give up and move on from there, but nope. This is the Cricut Explore Air 2. I thought about getting one for a while and this project gave me a reason to purchase it. I love this thing. It not only came in my favorite color combination, but it has this dramatic opening that is totally unnecessary. <laughs> but it makes every project seem exciting. Let's get cutting. So we'll be using an orangish yellow vinyl. The fonts on the Geiger counter match two fonts pretty well. Calibri size nine bold or Ariel size eight bold. These cutters have a hard time for cutting vinyl when there's not enough space or, or things are too complex and close together. So for that reason, I space the letters out. And usually you'd use this vinyl setting with more than one pass, but uh, what I found was that the cardstock setting worked best. And the final product looks bad. <laughs> But when you really look at it, all the letters are there and they are cut and lifted so that if you can get them off, I mean, look at that. That is just the end of a exacto knife right there. That's how small these letters are. So it really does make you appreciate uh, how they came out. I'll also say that I have noticed that others have used the vinyl to make stencils, which is also a possibility. Um, but I noticed that the insides of their A's or their D's weren't weren't filled in. Uh, this is perfect because you don't have to worry about that. The um, I've got the entire A here and it still has that little hole on it. Another thing that I didn't cover was this right here. I showed it at the beginning and mentioned the tool and the purpose behind it is to remove these side buttons. So you just kind of pop it underneath there and it will actually pop them out. So if you're wondering how to get that side button off um, or up here actually is the big one. You have to slide this underneath here and slide it in and, and it will pop off without having uh, problems or ruining your buttons. Um, so something also to keep in mind, make sure you hold on to it if, if nothing else for a collector's item. The number the common question that I get is, if this is a real working Pip-Boy, uh, can it lift heavy objects? Can it stop time? Can it change my clothes? No. Well, technically, in, in the Pip-Boy universe, remember that this thing interfaces with the Pip-Boy universe. We've built a device that can interact with another universe. And come on. At any rate, it does enough for me to be happy with. And I'll say that one of the things I really do like about it is that it can run any Android app for the most part. Because it can run apps and is Bluetooth enabled, uh, that means that I can also connect to items like these. This right here is a Bluetooth enabled thermometer and this right here is also Bluetooth enabled and will track your heart rate and uh, calories burned, things like that. So this device using the apps 
in relation to these can give me some level of biofeedback, which means that if I was to insert these into my fallout suit and uh, connect them by way of Bluetooth, then I could also check all my vitals uh, built into my suit. So, yeah, try that with the Raspberry Pi. I've been asked questions like, uh, can it run things like Doom or, or the other Fallout games? And the answer is, yeah, technically it can, actually. And as you saw in the first episode, it does also run things like Fallout Shelter. But uh, I really like Bethesda Pinball. If you've ever played that, it has uh, these awesome little pinball games uh, that are themed on some of the different Bethesda games. This cannot run it. It's, it's not that it won't try. It's just not strong enough. And that's where we were. By the end of last year, I completed this. I was happy with it. I put it over here behind me. <laughs> Which is one of the first things that happened to it. About six months ago, uh, you might have noticed that I have this Nuka-Cola bottle uh, that's been behind me. And, and you might notice that in the past, it actually had some type of cola in it. And uh, that's because it did. Uh, the downside to putting cola in here, especially if you close it up too fast. I had my son refill it and, and put the cap on. And I, I guess when it was still fizzing up, he put it on really fast and tight. And uh, we went upstairs and that night, it literally exploded blew up into the air apparently because we could tell where it had flipped and things uh, forensics would indicate from what was on the wall and everything else and, and just sprayed that cola everywhere including on my kit and uh, all over the uh, the pit boy and, and the case that's behind me and so clean that up still was working fine so far so good and then um, about two months ago, the silo speaker up here in the top uh, stopped working. Um, I tried to run it, it, it didn't work, and I had a feeling that it was, it was burnt up. Um, I had it turned on all the time, pretty much, and these little speakers are just not made to do that. And so, no problem. I went back out and I got another one, this time a, uh, an owl. And uh, I bought two of them, actually. So I've got another one as a backup. And once again, all I have to do is just twist to get inside, just like that. And this time though, I just cut it down and kept this casing right here, for the most part, this very end piece. And then took out some of the extra mechanics that are underneath the button right here and so now when I push on the button, still makes the wrong sounds when turning it on and off, but uh, yeah, fixed it, fit fine, worked great. And then one month after that, uh, I turned it off. I, th I think partially because of the, of the speaker thing. Um, I, had, I had turned it off at some point and then when I uh, came back, continually it had this message on the screen. Unfortunately, the process com.google.process.apps has stopped. And I tried everything that is out there that you can look up about how to make that get fixed. The downside to using the BlackBerry and then putting the full Google Play Store on there, which which I had to install all of the, uh, the kind of Hackberry uh, Google Play files, I couldn't uninstall certain pieces as easily. And also, that I couldn't get into one store or the other and, and just undo some things. So I couldn't check to see which app it was that was ruining it. I, I, I tried. I tried uninstalling different things and it still continued to give me the message. And eventually it came to the point where I said to myself, better for me to just start from scratch than it was to go forward. And that meant I needed to take the whole thing apart and put it back together again. And so I did. I will say that one of the big benefits to having this in modules, which is how I kept it, uh, there's a temptation when you're expanding things of, of making this all 
one piece or having something go from one module into the next. And the downside to that is not only would it be harder to upgrade it later, but also that uh, it's harder to take apart. So right now all I have to do is I just take off this end and this whole section will slide off. I can push this rod all the way through and everything inside will open up and I can again access the inside of the phone. And from there, I took out the SD card and, and did everything directly to the SD card and then reformatted the, the phone. Now on the upside, I think I made it actually work better in some ways than it was working before. And I, when I put it back together, I think I also made it look better than it was before. I also got to install uh, newer versions of some of my programs and, and got to set it up slightly differently the way I wanted to initially. Um, but games like uh, Fallout Shelter I lost because I chose not to put on the, the, the Google Play uh, hack again. Um, Originally, when I set up Fallout Shelter, I had to go onto my phone and transfer and copy some of the files that I had for Fallout Shelter onto here, and suddenly it seemed to work. And this time I couldn't do that because it's still trying to get uh, Google Play to work. And so I, I decided to leave it off this time. It's not like I'm playing that often enough to uh, make it worth it and, until I can figure out what to do. I don't know, compromises, but still, so cool, uh, great to display, and keep in mind too, I've been running this thing for six months as a clock. So it is a great clock, by the way. So there it is, there's all the information, uh, bared out, it is real, it does work. This has been a great project, uh, I really love it. I, and apparently other people do too. So if we do make any more upgrades, I'll, I'll make sure that we post a video about it. In the meantime, keep commenting and watching and, and liking and subscribing. We do plan to give away big boxes of stuff uh, to people who, who publicly subscribe and comment the most in our videos. Thanks again for watching. This has been your Geek Fix.